Hello, sandwich fanatics. I hope all of you are enjoying your summer and making some epic bomb ass sandwiches. So, and I know we've been gone for a month, but you know, we're here with a very special episode. So without further ado, Mr. Cheesy Sandwich Epicness Guy, well, Andy Valde, 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 I think I said it right. Val Valde. Yeah. Valde. Yes. I, got it. <laughs> I, was like, I got it right after like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> what was this? What does this mean? <laughs> the, the height. Are you saying I'm tall? Big sandwich, Bashy. I'm, I'm extra cheesy. <laughs> you are ex <laughs> certainly are, man. You certainly are. <laughs> well, welcome back, everybody. Yeah, we've been on a bit of a hiatus. Um, we took a month off for Fourth of July, and I don't think there's really a good reason why we took a month off. We just <laughs> we just did it, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, around uh, reviewing sandwiches and actually I got a bunch of stuff to post and uh, yes, edit yes. Out. yeah and and, and uh, what's actually happened on um, our very let's see that was our I think that was June so that was our last episode um, we have these now, which is so cool. Shout out to my brother-in-law, Zach Storm, who's making these epic, uh, we have a, a little uh, sandwich cutting board now. And then um, these have been on the store, but just a heads up that we have big ones too. So um, he cuts them by hand, sands them. They're, oh, they're so nice. Uh, <laughs> so check them out on our Etsy shop. Um, yeah, totally. Uh, Totally an awesome thing. Not even just for sandwiches, but I love charcuterie boards. So just layer it up with some cheese, get some wine going, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I do it for myself. So, uh, charcuterie board, but. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so yeah, anyway, but uh, yeah, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the most epic thing, I think, since maybe the start of What's a Sandwich? That's that's really conceited sounding, actually, but uh, the sandwich doctrine, which um, was invented by Will uh, Will Edwards, which we'll, we'll bring him on here in a minute, and then um, we're also joined by uh, long long time uh, sandwich page friend and fan uh, James Duffy. So really excited to talk to these guys tonight. And um, without further ado, I'm gonna put them in here. Let's see, hey James, hey James, hey Will. Hey, hey well. what's up, guys? So uh, I guess let's just we'll, we'll start with Will. Will, tell us a little bit about you and um, how you found yourself kind of getting involved with with our page. My my sandwich background, if you will. Um, yeah. The truth is, I don't uh, I don't recall the exact details of how I found the page. I just have an explicit memory of. Um, reminding myself to, you know, get good lighting every time I eat a sandwich because I've got some folks that are going to be interested in seeing it. You know, and I want to make sure they get the full full understanding of what I'm what I'm eating there. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, you know, there was lots of uh, lots of food pages I was seeing on Facebook and Instagram, but the, the sandwich one really spoke to me just because uh, it, it was pretty clear that was one of the only food oriented groups that was very specific. And everyone was kind of on board with that, you know. It was nothing but love for sandwiches. Um, and yes, yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, I think that I think that's pretty much how I found it. And then I was just, you know, posting sandwiches and eventually working on this uh, the sandwich doctrine, which we all yeah, love. which is just it's oh my god, we love the sandwich doctrine. And if people don't know about it, they need to know about it. So that's why we created this episode. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. That, and that's the beauty of a, a working document is that it's never really finished and, you know, every everyone can contribute. Absolutely. All right. What about you, James? Um, I don't know how I found the page. Um, it may have been recommended <laughs> by somebody. One of you guys could have seen me go on some diatribe about hot dogs. I don't know. Um, <laughs> somehow I got connected with you guys and... Found some fellow sandwich enthusiasts. <laughs> yeah, no, I, um, yeah, I can't remember. Uh, 
I know that I, in the past I've gone out there on Instagram specifically and, you know, I look up sandwich posts out there and I'm like, oh, this is an epic sandwich. You should you should check out this group because we've got people that are posting sandwiches. You might just be posting to your Instagram, but like you're going to see some crazy ones over here if you're that into sandwiches. And so that's kind of how the whole community was born. It seemed like there was just like this group of people that love seeing really cool sandwiches and like trying to figure out like, well, where can I find that sandwich or how can I make that sandwich? And so it's really kind of blossomed into this awesome thing. So thanks for being on with us today. No oh, problem. Definitely. Yeah. And thanks we were for, really, thanks for having us. We were really excited to get you guys together because uh, when James, when you started getting really active in the group, Andy had, I think you came up with the idea, like we should get Will and James together, the guy that wrote the doctrine. And they're like, that'd probably be like one of the most fun episodes we could get. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so before we get into the, to the doctrine, I got to ask each one of you guys to you in the simplest sense, what is a sandwich? Will? I would say in the simplest sense, uh, a sandwich is, um, it's, it's just a handheld meal. I'll put it that way. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Right on. James? Um, I think it's, it's my definition is probably the same. It's a, it's a, it's a meal that can be held. It's portable, um, with exception. Um, but generally a portable meal. Yeah. And it has to be assembled like a sandwich assembly is important. Okay. So uh, for you guys, does it have to be separated by any means or can it be kind of like a, let's just say a hoagie roll? I, I support hoagie rolls. I think they're valid sandwiches. Yes. I think a split roll, um, even a stuffed loaf counts as a sandwich. Stuffed loaf. Yeah. <laughs> I just... <laughs> <laughs> Love me a good stuffed loaf. Yeah. <laughs> um, so okay, so so moving on to the to the doctrine itself. So, well, I got to ask you, uh, how did you? First off, for those that don't know, explain a little bit of what the sandwich doctrine is and kind of um how how were you inspired to create this this uh guidelines if you will so i'd um i really wanted to make it with sort of a focus on the format of it so i kind of took this idea of kind of old legal documents and old legal forms and i wanted because i wanted it to be written as if it were an authority my issue was that there's no i don't have a source that i can cite as a reference for a lot of stuff related to sandwiches. And even if I did, it's usually, you know, I'm not going to cite the Wikipedia page. You know, my my college professors would would throw a fit if I were to do something like that. So I figured, well, the best way to, um, you know, to, to have a really good source that I can cite would just be to write it myself. And I figured, you know, if I keep the, if I put it in a really nice format and make it kind of a, a document that's always, always has room for adjustment, then we can always kind of, you know, it won't just be lost to time, so to speak. So I sort of wrote it with the idea of like, I want this to kind of read as if it was written before I came around. It's supposed to kind of read <laughs> as if it's a bit historical. And that's sort of just to, you know, for lack of a better term, that's sort of to just mislead people and make it more accepted as a valid source. Because you know? <laughs> anybody could certainly say, well, who is this guy? What does he know about sandwiches? So <laughs> it, it definitely has a, a we the people kind of vibe to it. Um, <laughs> the very, like, very first line, I was just like, wow, this is super legal. <laughs> Let this document serve as a reference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's perfect. And um, yeah, I remember. I, I remember. Man, this was. I think it was like 2014 or something like that. It was a while ago that that you first had sent this to me, yeah. and um, I, I I was just like, I don't know if this might be too intense for the group right now. Like, so <laughs> like I kind of tabled it. With that sort of stuff, you know, legal documents <laughs> shy a lot of people away yeah. from things. <laughs> You never know. You don't know how people are going to take things, you know. 
But uh, the funny thing is Ryan and his roommate have used this as like gospel in their their home. <laughs> Perfect. It has begun. Because of like the, because Red and I have always been like heavily involved with what's a sandwich. Like our friends will come over and like we'll be making sandwiches or something. They're like, oh, you got to do this. We're like, that's not a sandwich. And then they'll get turned into like a, like then it turns into the drunken argument at some point throughout the night. So then Red and I will bust out the legal document. Like, no, it's this section, blah, 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 says right here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's perfect because I, I feel like I you know I was definitely thinking about those exact type of arguments when I wrote it and I definitely <laughs> thought you know this way when someone says well how why do you know that prove it I'll say well I've got the document right here <laughs> we did we have one citation or I think that'd be the word for it I don't know but that would think that needs to be updated in it. If you are drunk, anything can be a sandwich. I, I would certainly <laughs> allow that. <laughs> no one wants, you never want to, don't tell a drunk person it's not a sandwich. Right. Just let it ride. Let it, ride. <laughs> it gets provisional sandwich status until yeah. further notice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Impaired judgment. It is a sandwich <laughs> until it's consumed. And at that point, it cannot be defined. Regret can be. Regret. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, right there, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, just you know, choking on an ice chip while uh, trying not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're okay. <laughs> so, so Will, was this like a bunch of tight, like sleepless nights writing this document, or is this something you whipped up during like a um, lunch? <laughs> if uh, I would say that if any of my old uh, coworkers or or superiors are watching, yes, uh, sleepless nights. But realistically, again, I was on help desk support, and if nobody needs their software uh, fixed, I figured, you know what, this would be a great time to do. And plus, anytime you were typing away at a document and switching back and forth between Microsoft Office and you know your Chrome browser, it looks <laughs> like your work. It yeah, looks work, work, work was yeah. being done, whether or not that was. Uh, <laughs> or not, I can't say, but. It's a very official looking uh, document. It, and that, and that was sort of, the, I, I spent a good amount of time going through and because a lot of, I sort of just word vomited what I wanted in the document. And then I went through and kind of said, okay, what, how can I order this kind of appropriately? So that's when I got the idea of like, you know, we're going with a preamble and then different articles and just kind of <laughs> moving along like that, you know? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, so James, have so have you... Have you read the document yet? So oh, yes, actually, so for everyone that's watching right now, you actually can find it on the, the What's the Sandwich group page you know, under the announcements tab. Um, if you click there, you can go right into the document and read it. Um, but uh, so James, you have you have seen it. What, what was your first reaction? Um, uh, my first reaction <laughs> was that this is something that's been needed for so long. Um, <laughs> I go on these long <laughs> diatribes about what constitutes a sandwich and what doesn't, and there's no, uh, there's no backing to it at all. I can't, re I can't refer to anything. I can't, I can't communicate what I'm trying to say without any, without any authority, unless there's something behind it. Um, I think the document yeah. is. Have I you think found the document your... is, it's just like a much needed common vocabulary for us, right? Because unless everybody's speaking the same language, you can't really have that argument. And I think the doc I think the doctor does that. Yeah, for sure. Have you found yourself conflicted with someone else over what is and isn't a sandwich and you just wish that you had something to just be like, you know, this is it and just uppercut them with <laughs> with, with some sort of proof? Well, there's the hot dog discussion that we've all had. Um, and, you know, you often have to refer yep. to the, the Earl sandwich story, you know, and, you know, that, that's that's a story that it's an urban legend of sorts. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's it's all that, you know, authoritative, you know, but to have a doctrine that breaks down what it means, what that story actually means to have a um, have the sandwich invented, you know, to protect your hands, to be able to carry your meal. You know, that's that's that carries a lot more than just this random legend. You know, 
And I, I like that you mentioned the, uh, you know, keeping your hands clean, because I've, I've often thought that I can't tell people what a sandwich is until I first tell them why a sandwich is. And that yes. would, by giving us a reason, like we didn't just want to eat bread, the bread had a purpose. Um, also with regard to uh, giving authority to it, like that it. is the only reason I put the Wall Street Journal quote in that article. So I figured, well, it's, it's got the Wall Street <laughs> Journal quote in there, you know? <laughs> right. So, so for for those that are maybe not familiar um, with the 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 Earl Sandwich story, what's the quickest way? <laughs> could, could either of you um, kind of sum that up real quick for those that are watching? Um, I my understanding was that this guy's uh, name was Earl of Sandwich, and he the story I read was that he he wanted to keep his hands clean while he did work. And so he'd ask for his salted beef to be delivered between two pieces of bread. Other historical context has suggested that man was a very, very heavy gambler and he just needed to have the sandwich in one hand, cards in the other. I like that better because I'm like, <laughs> I believe that one. I don't believe you wanted, you wanted to work so hard you were putting off eating. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, the version I've heard I've heard all the versions, but the, the card game version is the one I've heard. He's playing cards, and he did not want to stop playing. So he got his servant or wife to deliver, I believe it's steak in some stories, um, between two pieces of bread. Wow, I suck. I've never heard any of these. Yeah. <laughs> the, the colorful history. This should be a children's story. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make a book. I feel like this should be one of those like children's books. <laughs> I'm sure nobody owns the story it's in public domain. You can just yeah, we can do a sandwich a, we needs could, a publishing arm now. We can, now we we could go and go full throttle and make it like a pop up book, so you can kind of see the different oh. <laughs> the different sandwiches. It has like a little like playing card as well. You could you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's that is I mean, awesome. Consider, no, I, I consider consider what else you could have tried to eat while you have cards in your hand it pretty much had to be a sandwich because yeah. once you have a utensil into that, now now you still have to, it, you need a free hand. You need a completely free hand. So that's why you need the sandwich. Yeah, or to stop you from drinking, you know. <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> it's probably, that would be my, that would be my thing. What'd you say, Ryan? That something to soak up the booze, the bread. Yeah. Yes. Yes, to keep you going. Well, so there's that story of the the Cornish pasty, which was created, which was basically pastry around uh, beef stew, so that coal miners can eat carried in their pockets, and that's a similar origin story to the sandwich. Yeah. Whoa. Hmm. Although of course, yeah, pasty is a one. pie. Cornish pasty is actually a pie, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> <laughs> it can be a sandwich. They it's didn't, mostly a pie. They needed the uh, the sandwich doctrine back then yes. to to classify. So well, you said this is a working document, right? Yes. Absolutely. So, so in your mind, it's not in its perfect state. Yeah, I, I would argue that it's not even in a complete state. I feel like it just kind of ends. <laughs> and it was one of those things where I was like, all right, at some point, I'll know what goes here. And every time I've read it, I'm kind of like, I don't know exactly. <laughs> I, I'm tempted to start defining common sandwiches, but then my worry is I'll feel like it's incomplete if it's not an exhaustive list of every sandwich, you know? And then we're going to get into the weeds of it. Is a hamburger a cheeseburger? I, you know, these are all questions for <laughs> for everyone to uh, to, uh, to yeah. ponder. Yeah, um, actually, uh, I correct or stand, I stand corrected. Uh, I guess the sandwich doctrine link uh, expired on the group or something like that. So we'll have to repost it out there. I think you still have it, Will. Oh, yeah. um, so we'll we'll repost that after this. But um, you. I guess kind of going back to what we were saying, you're you're open to suggestions. So if, if people are willing, you know, leave leave in the comments what you'd like to add to it, and then um, or you know, kind of where you want it to go, like what article, and um, yeah, we'll just like make this the 
the declaration of sandwich independence <laughs> of the the world. <laughs> I like this. I like this title better. This is a more <laughs> the sandwich doctrine that can kind of be you know that's sort of just the pregame to the sandwich declaration, I guess. <laughs> There we go. There we go. This is the working draft. <laughs> we'll all sign it at one point. Like, sign it in your favorite condiment. <laughs> yeah. As long as it isn't ketchup. No ketchup. Yeah, no ketchup allowed. I'll have to. I'll have to see. I don't know what sauces I've got on deck. I'm sure I can find one that'll. <laughs> Someone's saying the uh, the sandwich Bible. <laughs> I like that. The I book like of that. buns. <laughs> the book of buns. That's a whole whole other thing. <laughs> so I guess kind of speaking of buns, um, I believe it's what article one kind of starts talking about bread. Um, I think, yeah, right? I think. Let's see, article. Yeah, it's in Article 1. Uh, I think Article 1 just mentions, like, his, history and definition. And, yeah, it gets down to, I think, the two details. Yeah, it, it touches on filling and encased. And then later I specified that uh, I think I defined bread as purposely vague so that you could always kind of put it – you could always kind of use something to make it a sandwich. And then, like, well, it's, it's uh, bread okay. for now, you know. Well, um, previous – a previous uh, live a live stream guest called it a vessel, and I've been using that since then. I like that. That yeah. is a good. That's a good way. Yeah, a vessel a good way and to a fill it, it. You know. I think because I I I go into into detail explaining uh, filling and encased, and basically the sandwich has to have a filling and it has to be encased in something. And then I guess my example was bread, but I went on to point out that uh, in context, bread doesn't have to be bread. I'm not saying that anything is bread. <laughs> Just when it comes to a sandwich, you go to KFC, you get the double down. Right now, your fried chicken is your bread only because right. it's encasing your pepper jack cheese and two strips of bacon, which don't ask me why I remember that. I, I, did, <laughs> I did quite like that. <laughs> so do you, I mean, that's a good good example. I mean, so would you would either of you guys classify that as a sandwich? I, I want to say it's a sandwich because it, it its form is that of a sandwich. You took the form of the sandwich and you just kind of, well, you replaced bread with fried chicken. Um, and I'd be I'd be hesitant to say it's not a sandwich because now the the problem is it definitely is the same form as a sandwich. So we could argue that it is. My main issue would be that because you're now holding two pieces of chicken, you completely lose the purpose of keeping your hands clean. To be fair, there's a lot of sandwiches that your hands simply aren't going to stay clean. So I don't think it's fair to make that like a necessity. Um, I do. I just think it's important to keep that in mind, you know, when defining a sandwich. So whether or not your hands gets messy isn't going to make it not a sandwich as a result. But when your when your sandwich is like you know has no hopes of the hands remaining clean, then it's like okay, well I'll you know I'll call it a sandwich, but I think we need an asterisk here to point out you know, well I, that's not right, that's not right. I don't want to say it's not a sandwich. I just think we do need to respect the origin of the bread keeps my hands clean. So let's be fair. Any sandwich I have ever made. My hands are not clean at all by the like. And this, and this, <laughs> this is a. I'm really glad you brought that up because I'm not the cleanest eater. So, well, like, I, like drips and like stuff falls out, and I'm just like, you know what? I keep a fork on the side to pick up anything. If my, exact. I, if my hands, if anything is clean after I eat a Philly cheesesteak, I'm probably gonna complain about that Philly cheesesteak, right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's how it is with the. Okay. I think it's a sandwich and I will yeah. outline my methodology, which is all my posts are based on this methodology. Yeah. Um, number one, uh, it is, it is a version of a sandwich because it's, you're replacing bread with chicken. So it's lineage by lineage. It's a sandwich. It is, it is an homage of a sandwich possibly. Right. But it is taking the form of a traditional sandwich. So by, I think by lineage, by morphology, just how it looks, it's a sandwich. Uh, secondly, by assembly, 
I think that's really important. Uh, the chicken pieces are pre-cooked before you assemble it. The vessel is in itself something else. And you assemble it into a sandwich. Therefore, it is a sandwich. I like that. I like that. So by those two measures and others, I believe a double down is a sandwich. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, double down I is mean, a sandwich. We need it. Does anyone have a hammer we can slam to a 58? <laughs> yeah. A ruling? Yeah. <laughs> it is yeah, there you go. Just don't break. Oh, you've got ranch. Whatever it is, it's <laughs> Slam the ranch in the, in the Midwestern style, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Midwestern courthouse. That's the Chicago, gavel that's law. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was. Uh, I, I expected like no less from you there, James. Um, you always blow me away by like the way that you classify stuff even within the group like I re I'll read your comments and I'm like dude why aren't you what you can just you have it you can have the page <laughs> here you go James <laughs> I, I did I very I picked up on uh lineage and morphology I think those were you could not have used better words uh when explaining that um and part of the that that actually kind of reminded me part of the part of the reason I had kind of the approach to what is and isn't a sandwich and, and why it matters to define it um, was classification of, um, of like, uh, in this case, specifically uh, anything that had a shell, uh, snails and other mollusks and stuff. I took a paleobiology class when I was in college, it's all fossil biology. And so it came down to like, you would learn a lot about, you know, fossils and uh, all the different animals that left them behind and eventually you're looking at charts of how the animals came to be and then it gets to the point of like what i'm getting at is um the names matter you know so it's like we have that we had this thing that was a sandwich and this thing that we have now is clearly an extension of that so you know to be able to classify them as like sort of like a you know it's not to say that the sandwich evolved into having chicken instead of bread but well actually I, I am saying that that is an evolution that is an upgrade so yes um you know by 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 using by using terms like morph morphology and lineage we're very accurately describing a change that has occurred over hundreds of years in the food world specifically with sandwiches and i think the fact that it's taken that long um and they've been around that long is really just a testament to their popularity uh, overall. I don't think I've been to any place where a sandwich wasn't available in some form, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, ever since starting even like this group, I've noticed like even in like movies, TV shows, like they're always talking about sandwiches. I think it's just yeah. like a simple thing. It's a common, common ground. Everybody kind of meets at the sandwich. Um, it's probably, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. The average of the people. Yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah. No, it's, it's funny. It, the, the, uh, um, the lineage thing and kind of evolution talk of, of sandwiches. Um, it's so funny. It's almost like we're, you know, we started off simple and now we're just getting downright like gnarly. <laughs> we're going to take a piece of meat. We're going to get bread it and make it bread. We're making it bread. And then we're gonna take some more meat, make that bread, and then stick some more stuff in between it. Let's just get real gnarly. Like um, I, I'm I, I'm a little worried for the future. Like what's next? <laughs> we have nowhere to go but up. There's many more sandwiches. <laughs> I mean you could be worried or you could be excited. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I, I have nothing bad to say about meat as bread. So um Dude, I do that. I yeah, do it's, it's yeah. We're only on the way up. All right. Where What'd we you say, Ryan? List of I said I use cheese as bread, but where are we at on the next thing? Oh well, I was just gonna ask James if there was any like part of the the sandwich doctrine that that he might want to highlight on. If there was something that really kind of struck home with you, if there was something you would change in there. I mean, I already brought up the bread and vessel thing. Um, I think bread is a little too specific and triggering in a sense, because um, a lot of sandwich casuals 
will uh, refer to the two slices of bread as the defining characteristic of a sandwich, and it's not. Or whether or not it's bread or tortilla or something else, and I don't think it is. I, I very much like the word vessel. I think, I think vessel, vessel, edible, edible vessel, yeah. because that it's everything we need, and it's not. You know, we're not we're not pigeonhole it to bread only. You know, right? And some people cut it up as a you know, uh, a starchy thing, a carb or something, but it doesn't right. have to be. Yeah, no. I like- uh, it, it comes down to assembling it as a sandwich to me. Yeah. So vessel is the new word instead of bread. Vessel. I think it's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I heard that on one of the earlier. Slams. Dude, I'm waiting for that ranch to explode. <laughs> and it's something I've heard in I think the first or second uh live stream. So nice. Good deal. I don't remember the guest. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. If it was the second one, it would have been Jordan. Um if it was the yeah, I think it was Jordan. Um when we had Jordan Banker on. Um, he said something about it. Yeah, the vessel. Or no, wait. He was saying apparatus. Oh yeah, <laughs> drink. Uh, <laughs> that's he delayed. may have also he, um, he may have also inspired the idea of assembly because I think something needs to be sandwiched as a verb. And yes. I took that and saw and saw that as a means of further defining what can be a sandwich. That it has to be assembled as such. Do you, do you think uh, yeah. that's something that, so, the, that the document touches on about the just ha- how the, the verb sandwich is yeah. literally used in contexts completely unrelated to food nowadays? You could be sandwiched between two people on the subway. It's um, a circular argument because the root of the, the root. It's always going to come back to sandwiches. Yeah. Like yeah. This. yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> kind of nowhere However, to go. I do believe that. the act of sandwiching something is crucial. Um, not necessarily, you know, something in between two pieces of anything. There we go. But just, yeah, it just has to be protecting the filling from the user, you know. Right. <laughs> the end user of the sandwich. Yeah. I, th- I think it goes back to the whole, like, keeping your hands clean thing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think that's a, a big root. Yes, yes. And, and I never thought of it in that way before. Like, yeah, that's pretty much why people do that they want to eat their meal but not have to like get their hands dirty of course so in my methodology that's that's intent what's the intent of the sandwich also given given when this guy was concerned with keeping his hands clean this is kind of getting into the weeds but i think it is worth mentioning in the 1600s having clean hands was a lot different than having clean hands in 2021 (laughs) So, you know, and that is the I'm thinking, like, if you're not sticking your hand into the soup, they're clean. So, you know, a greasy bit of bread to them was probably cleaner than most things. Uh, whereas it's nowadays, for, it'd yeah. be like, well, if your hands aren't sanitized, you know, they're still dirty. So. It's more for reasonable portability. Ex- exactly, exactly. And that's one thing. It's like, you know, um, like on the bus and on the trains, most people aren't supposed to eat, but they do it anyway. And usually they do it with a sandwich because... What else are you going to pull out of your bag, you know? Yeah, you go into a gas station. What would you What would you trust? A sandwich? A roller dog? <laughs> uh, you know? <laughs> whichever, whichever one looks like it has been there for less time, I'll probably just grab that. <laughs> okay. It's because I used to – yeah, I have no shame. I'll just eat all – Usually I'd walk out like, oh, I, got a, I got a roller dog and I got a sandwich. Fucking what could be better? <laughs> I mean, like, I well, got, like, and like, you know, some like, like that shitty nacho cheese to dip everything in just so, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you survived the dollar store sandwich. So, I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> two of them actually. So you can, you can eat anything, Ryan. You got the iron gut. <laughs> you <have laughs> <everything>. <laughs> some- okay, so we, we got a question. Hi, Mom. Um, <laughs> is a Hot Pocket a sandwich? I think that's a great question hmm. uh, to kind of test this doctrine's power. Right. So where would this fall? Well, it, it definitely has a filling. 
We know it's got a filling and it is encased. And it, honestly, it's, I want to argue that it's closer to like one of those pastry pies just because of the material and because it's, it's fully closed, you know, now the fact that it's a, a microwavable product, you know, it's, it's, it's technically ready to eat other than the fact that it needs to be warmed up. So, you know, it's like no, technically no cooking is required. So I don't know, I don't know where I'd fall as far as like assembly, because somebody had to assemble that. And in theory, everything was cooked when they assembled it, or do they put the filling in and then bake the hot pocket around it? I actually don't know much about hot pockets. I think that's crucial. (laughs) However, it is on the, I believe it's on the packaging. It says sandwich. Um, well, in the package, there we go. It might there. say sandwich on the package. I gotta look it up. Yeah, look it up. So, um, however, I believe it's so, more akin to a pie. That um, I, I was gonna say because of the nature of the crust and the filling, it its shape and form does not resemble a pie to me. But I, it feels like a pie to me, even though I can't exactly say why. Really, it just because of the pastry, I guess, and the preparation of it. I suspect the the pastry is cooked um, with the filling inside. Uh, therefore, it's, it is a pie. All right. I just sent a picture of the box to Brittany, and it does say Hot oh. Pockets and Sandwiches. Right. It but does. It's more of a hand I pie. can actually. Yeah. Let me see here. Hmm. I can share my screen, I think. We'll see if this works. If it doesn't work, which it has done that before, we'll just pretend like we saw it. Um, so, James, question. Would okay. you uh, pockets um, the stuffed loaf under that? Um, it would. I think a stuffed loaf is more like a bagel dog or um, uh, I guess that's a tough one. Um, can, can you guys see? Oh yeah, I see. It, it is. It is. Do you say it? Hot pocket sandwich. It's very, it's very small, but it's there. Yeah, it says sandwiches. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And this is like one of the best hot pockets. Love these ones. You can't go wrong with the pepperoni pizza. It's either that or ham and cheese. <laughs> my, my girlfriend swears by the Philly cheese stick hot pockets. So I'm, not, I'm not 100 percent if she's tuned in, but she'd be upset if I didn't point that out. It's the it's the Philly cheese steak. There's the Philly cheese steak only hot pockets in the in the crib. That's oh it. man, <laughs> I got to get my hands on that. All right, so guys, oh, question. for the final verdict is: Do you guys are we considering hot pockets a sandwich? I'm I'm leaning towards no, but. I, I'm I'm almost feel like I'm pigeoning pigeonholing myself by doing that. I will say no, because it's a yeah. Pie. It, yeah I, I, it's also I sandwich James. adjacent though. So and I think it, it's interesting. Interesting that they put it adjacent. on their um. It's sandwich adjacent. Yeah. All right. So, hot pockets are sandwich adjacent. Done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got a good one now. I've I've got another one here. Okay. This is this will be our last one to classify. Okay, this is from Zach. So, hearing what has been said, Taco Bell came out with the chicken chalupa. One is a taco a sandwich. Two is the chicken chalupa a sandwich based off the discussion. Hmm. I'm not familiar with the chicken chalupa. It's a chicken. I think- it's like a chicken patty shaped as a hard shell taco. I believe sure. we have precedence on this issue can, um, with the with the KFC double down. Uh, that's established precedence uh, as a sandwich, yeah. and because chicken is the vessel, um, and its its lineage is of a standard taco, which I believe is a sandwich. I say it's a sandwich. I'd, I'd be inclined to agree. I was trying to think of anything that I could use to kind of rule out um, a taco falling under the sandwich category, but you know. It could be hard shelled or soft shelled tacos, and you know some some people you know usually it is a kind of folded tortilla. Some people just roll them up by the time they get them to their table. Um, in any case, though, you are using a vessel to keep your hands clean while you're eating. And I mean, I can't really think of a better 
and when I think if I think of like food vessels that I would consume, I would think of ta- of sandwiches and tacos probably in that in that order. Um, and also similar to sandwiches, there's lots of you know kind of lots of variety with it. There's hard tacos, there's soft tacos. Um, I forget what those things are called. That they, they look like tacos and they're dipping them in the juice. I keep seeing videos of those on uh, on the internet. Um, the beer, the beer oh, tacos. Yeah. yeah, and those look really good. Um, and yeah, I would I would argue that um, in light of what we'd said earlier, I would say just by by its form and like kind of its structure and how it's eaten, I would consider it a sandwich. Um, and the fact that you know, I, I could see I could see why people would argue that it's very different from a sandwich, but from a definitional standpoint and how you're going to be actually eating it, it, it is pretty much a sandwich. So I guess we're saying it. <laughs> Ryan, what is the ruling? Uh, that's where you guys, I'm, you got the ruling. I believe the ruling is that ta- yes, tacos are sandwiches. All right, Midwest sandwich gamble done. It's been <laughs> chicken chalupa there. Therefore the chicken chalupa <laughs> is a sandwich. <laughs> Now, and we also Zach. have a, I think this is a, a good time to bring this up. I did, there. this is a small note uh, in the sandwich doctrine. Um, the whole doctrine is actually in uh, stark disagreement with um, the court case of White City Shopping Center versus um, PR Rests. Uh, basically, this was in Massachusetts in 2006. Um, this was regarding a... Um, what was it like a non-competition clause in a shopping mall? Um, basically, uh, they decided that this place can't sell burritos or there was a sandwich place and a burrito place open and the sandwich place didn't want them to sell burritos because they said that is violating the non-competition clause because that's the same as a sandwich. And the burrito place, of course, argued, no, we're not selling sandwiches. We are not competing with you. We're selling burritos. And the court decided that a sandwich includes at least two slices of bread, which I cannot disagree with that more because, first of all, it could just be one slice of bread. Also, they're now saying it has to be bread. Um, Now, I know that the statute of limitations is probably passed, but we should probably try to talk to the courts in Massachusetts and see about, you know, (laughs) overturning that definition. (laughs) Appeal. Yeah, the burrito joint got a bad rap. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh nice. <laughs> what are you saying, Ryan? I said let's suit up and go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bring the doctor. You guys there. You've got the gavel. You've got the authority over yeah. us, so. It is the Ryan sandwich. brings the ranch. <laughs> the sandwich gavel. You got open the briefcase, you got the doctrine, and you got the gavel. Wait, wait, Except, this is, we're gonna go this is this is just we're gonna the go to Sam's Club and get ranch. you a big one though. <laughs> I got this like big phone. It's already like half gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, that 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 blows for that burrito joint. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, they technically, I think they were <laughs> no, the the burrito joint. They were the ones that um, they were they were they won by by um by winning that court case the court case decided a sandwich has to have two slices of bread so the burrito can stay because it's not two slices of bread so they decided and on one hand i I agree that i don't think a burrito place is directly competing with a sandwich place any more than one fast food versus another fast food but i find it really surprising that the court just decided you know every sandwich has two slices of bread it's legal now and then they slam the gavel because i just feel like that's very <laughs> <Yeah>. short-sighted <laughs> like you guys are you guys are messing with a whole wide range of history right now yeah they, they have not oh, read yeah. anything that has cited anything else you know they didn't cite a doctor they didn't cite hmm. history exactly yeah. nothing and nothing. i would i would argue that now obviously we have no way to prove this which actually might might kind of help our case i would argue that the first sandwich could have been one piece of bread because it says, yeah, he wanted his meat, you know, between two slices of bread. But like, you know, frequently, especially like when you're a little kid, your mom just puts condiments, the peanut butter and jelly on half the bread and then just folds it over. And it's almost, yeah. you know, it's more more portable. I also have seen people use um, bread or like a tortilla. You kind of grip it in your hands, then use mm-hmm. your now bread gloved hand to pick the food up. <laughs> 
I've always liked that method of keeping it <laughs> really, it really, it really shows that. at the roots of the uh, of the sandwich when you do it that way. I mean, sandwiches have to predate sliced bread, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess they would predate Betty White, and Betty White was born <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> or, or before sliced bread. <laughs> oh man. Maybe we could we could get Ryan. in touch with Betty and be like, Betty, what, what were, how were they making sandwiches before they were slicing the bread? <laughs> <sighs> oh, I'm just off track. I lost track of my notes. Okay. Well, okay, so a, a, another question I had, this is kind of just like, I think jumping, like jumping to a whole new thing. Um, and, and I disagree with this question, actually. My question was, do you think that the making of this doctrine would now limit someone's creativity to making sandwiches? But in reality, I think that it has now opened, made things a little bit more broad minded. I think there's a, there's a lot of um, other pages, other groups, other people, National National Hot Dog Council guy, um, that are very close-minded on what could be a sandwich. So I, th I think I disagree with my own question. Would you guys agree with me that it has now opened the door to, to more creativity now um, if people are backing the four of us I, that are right here <laughs> agreeing about this document? I, <laughs> I would hope that it... If you know the last thing I would want to do is uh, lower the amount of sandwich creativity, my and one of the more difficult things about writing it was writing it in such a way that it wouldn't kind of make the classification really narrow. But I would think the, I would think the more most likely scenario would be someone that didn't previously think, you know, all these things I've made could be sandwiches. I would hope that they would read this document and say, hey, you know what, I was making a sandwich. Um, and I think uh, one of my, probably my favorite homemade sandwich to make myself is an ice cream sandwich because I love the packaged ones. But if you go out and buy cookies and put the ice cream between it yourself, that's, it's the homemade ice cream sandwich. And, you know, that way the, you're, you know, you're not limited to a chocolate chip cookie and vanilla ice cream. And similarly, I would hope this document, you know, kind of shows people you don't have to limit yourself to bread, meat and cheese, you know, go the KFC route. Put it between fried chicken why not I I would, love, yeah really i would hope people see that as like an inspiration to get more creative with it you know one thing i really love about this is you didn't make the doctrine to prove people wrong you did it to open up you made it to open up people's minds more it's about what could be a sandwich versus no that's not a sandwich no it your reasoning for making it was better than what most people make things like that for yeah and I, you know like the main debate that contributed to it was definitely the is a hot dog a sandwich and what i what i kind of wanted to do was like because i'd heard that debate and been involved in it so many times and it was one of those things where i'm like i want everyone to take a step back not only is a hot dog a sandwich a lot of other stuff is sandwiches too but that's a good thing you know i don't want it to be like you know now we're just calling everything a sandwich. You know, is is a cake a sandwich if it's got frosting between two layers of cake? Well, no, because it's still it's still cake. But you know, we don't want to. It's like we 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 want it to expand the horizons of sandwiches. You know, we've we've gotten this far in over four hundred years of sandwiches. You know, who's to say where we can go in the next four hundred? Yeah, James, what do you think? I mean, where do you draw the line with? Where do we stop calling things sandwiches? <laughs> I mean, I think the document, what it accomplishes is that it gets people to think more critically about what a sandwich is and, and more critically about what they're eating. Um, the, the cake example is perfect, actually. Um, I would say a cake can be considered a sandwich, kind a very terrible sandwich, <laughs> a very terrible dessert sandwich. Not but, one you bring to lunch with you. But, you it's, know? but it's much more cake than <clears throat> sandwich. But yeah, it can still be classified as a sandwich should you choose to. And that's, a, I think that sentence alone, I think is really important. It could, just because it's a sandwich, it's still a cake too. Like it can be, these yes. things can always have an overlap, you know. Same with pies and such. And yeah. So if I get the National Sandwich Council guy on here um, to debate if a hot dog is a sandwich, will either of you 
debate him live. 100%. Oh, yeah. I would destroy 100%. him. Yeah. yeah. I got the. <laughs> Ryan? No <laughs> we got to get this guy. Easy. Hot dog is a, is a sausage sandwich. It's, it's a, a specialized it's a sausage sandwich. Easy. And the, the, fact that, the fact that hot dogs are honestly like one of the cleanest things, like that's one of the cleanest th hands. Sorry, I messed that up a bit. That's one of the food items that we regard as a sandwich that would keep your clean. Hey, your hands are going to be clean when you eat a hot dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cleaner than most sandwiches. When I eat a Reuben, I have to wash my hands afterwards because you know that Reuben is going to be dripping with tasty juices. And I mean, same with yeah. a burger. But a hot dog? No, nah, they they figured the hot dogs out. All the juice is inside. It's it's contained. Mm -hmm. Every argument against the hot dog being a sandwich is a straw straw man argument. I mean, pretty much, yeah. They can be knocked down so easily. So. And because then it yeah. turns into um, you know, any any split roll. Once you say a hot dog's not a sandwich, you've removed any split roll from being a sandwich. Which I've had some of the best Italian sandwiches I've had mm -hmm. were from a, a bread that was not fully cut through. You know. And those were definitely sandwiches, quite good ones. And the state of Massachusetts would not consider that a sandwich. Exactly. Accord according <laughs> to this court case. I, I feel like if you brought this up to the judge who ruled that, he would be like, dude, what are you talking about? Like, I don't remember that. <laughs> I just thought <laughs> to go home. it was just a day at the <laughs> office to him, but it really had an effect on us. So, Well, the irony yeah. is that the New England hot dog bun is a split, thick slice of bread. Yeah. That, that isn't really cut all the way through. <laughs> yeah, it's just a piece of bread. That is very ironic. Oh, oh man, a, you, I, I go to an, uh, an upscale hot dog place because that's a thing here, and um, yeah, that they only serve them on those split New England style, and that's one of the reasons I like it so much is because it's it's really good. <laughs> upscale. So, what's an upscale hot dog place like? Because I I, I, I don't I don't know if we have that here. Well, in I, I say upscale. It's it's sort of like they just have a I would call them fancier hot dogs. My best example is they have a Bon Me hot dog. Um, you can get like a pho oh, hot dog. Okay. Um, a what? Like the you know the Vietnamese noodle soup. They want They took different. They turned that into a hot dog form. That's one oh. I haven't tried, so I don't know how well the flavor correlates. Usually when I go, I just get like a chili dog. Um, but they 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 make themselves seem like it's you know a bit of a fancier place, but they're just selling good quality hot dogs. Also, they've got a free Pac-Man machine you can use while you're there. So it's, you know, I naturally <laughs> gravitate towards that because I figured, right yeah, if i got to wait five minutes, i got Pac-Man right <laughs> Yeah, free is good, man. Well, well, well I, yeah, no, you guys are my, my dream team. So when I get uh, Joey Chestnut and National Hot Dog Council guy on here live, we're gonna. Ryan and I are just gonna sit off to the side, and then you guys just. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll do that. And you'll be swinging the gavel. Well, that's what the doctrine does. Is it cuts through all this sandwich dogma that we've had. <laughs> you know. Sandwich dogma. That's what it is. Yeah. People yeah. just say it's a sandwich or not, and without any real backing to it. There's always there's always a lot of emotion in sandwich arguments, and I very much wanted to remove that, you know, <laughs> suspend, suspend your feelings for the greater good. <laughs> oh man, I'm pretty okay, emotional so. when I post. So fair enough. <laughs> like, how dare you say that's not a sandwich? <laughs> I, got, uh, I didn't realize I grabbed this, but I got the stuff right here called sriracha sandwich sauce. Oh wow. Oh. I've had that exact brand, but not the. I didn't know they had a sriracha version. That's that's nope. going on my list. And I just thought it was like spicy mustard. I didn't realize what it was. I never actually read the label. I gotta try this now. Is it is it just oil and vinegar and sriracha and like some herbs and spices? Uh, ingredients: soybean oil, hot chili sauce, uh, chili puree, sugar, garlic, salt. Distilled vinegar, potassium, blah blah blah. Egg yolk, water, distilled vinegar, spice, uh, something something. Big words, things. These all xanthium gum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, well, we've only got about about five minutes here. I know we're coming kind of to an end here, so I got to ask each each one of you guys, what is your like? 
your top sandwich on your radar as of today? Like what's, what's your go to sandwich? Like if you, if you're going to go out and get something right now, what would it be? I, I know right off the bat. Go for it. Um, the last couple of weeks, uh, whenever I've, usually I try to time it. So it's like when I'm really hungry and I know I don't have to go anywhere later, I walk a couple blocks down and I go and get a Philly cheesesteak from this place called Bedwich. And it is a, it's a very large sized, it's a good sized Philly cheesesteak. And it's got like, what is it? It's got like some kind of pepper aioli and then cherry peppers as well with like the onions and the cheese and everything. And it's really it's one of those things where I like it. I would never say that it's a traditional Philly cheesesteak um, just because like they've added, you know, it's kind of like a, an expansion on that, but they nailed it so well that it's like, it's hard for me to go there and order anything else. Cause I'm like, I got to eat that cheesesteak again. Like I've just got to have that. Also, I've, I've gotten it you know, four <laughs> times and only one of those four times that I eat the whole thing without stopping in one sitting. So it's a, it's a pretty, it's a hefty boy. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, that's that sounds amazing. What about you, James? Well, my sandwich eating days are kind of coming to a middle. Uh, I had a health scare recently or a year ago, and I can't have I'm diabetic and have a weak pancreas. I can't have sandwiches as much as I used to. Um, but I do dream about sandwiches. And one of them I dream about, literally had a dream about, is a place called Johnny's Pastrami in uh, Culver City. Um, they do a a French dipped pastrami sandwich. It's West Coast style, so it's very thin, really fatty, um, and it's dipped in the pastrami juice. Uh, it's a sandwich that is really salty, and when you're done eating it, you think about it for two or three days later. Oh, that sounds yeah. so good. I got the chills when you described that. Yeah, I'm and not it's, even... <laughs> it's not like the East Coast style, deli oh, style. It's a West Coast sandwich tour. Yeah. <laughs> um, but our, our honorable mention actually goes to a place in Chicago called uh, uh, 11 City Diner over hmm. on Roosevelt and Wabash. Um, they, do oh, a, oh, yeah. they do a classic, you know, Jewish deli pastrami, but you can also add a, a schmear of a chicken liver for a dollar. Ooh, That's did you have it with the schmear? I did when I could eat those sandwiches, yes. Yep. So what, like, what did it, what was it like? Was it very, like, he, like, I shouldn't say heavy, like rich, like oh, it was heavy. liver can have that. Yeah. It was very heavy. It was yeah. very rich. It was just the most indulgent thing. And it's only for, for another dollar. You can just get a whole schmear of dollar. Yeah. All the schmear. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I got to check that out. That's not too far from here. Yeah. That's South Brian? Lake, Chicago. Yeah. Well, road we'll to, uh, yeah. Our, uh, we'll ask Wayne Johnson to meet up with us. Huh? He, he's, he's right in that area. Kind of. Yeah, field trip. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, awesome, awesome. Well, thanks thanks guys so much for being on with us. Um, I, I, I I definitely want to do this again. You guys are like a wealth of sandwich knowledge. And um, I'm sure everybody that's been watching, listening is definitely learning a lot from you guys. So um, Ryan, I think you need to bring the gavel every time now. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the stream with the gavel every time. I like this is a new thing. <laughs> so the Midwest, yes, everybody should read the doctrine. The Midwest sandwich gavel. Yes, uh, yes. I think let's, everybody let's, should read the doctrine. Out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, I agree with James. Everybody, check out the doctrine. Um, we'll repost the file. I don't know what happened, but maybe we'll do like a g drive link or so i don't know we'll figure it out but we'll get it all out there for everybody um thanks ryan as always now that you're the judge and uh yeah thanks everybody eat more sandwiches and we'll see you next time stay tasty all right thank you guys take it easy thank you everybody